Mm -hmm. So in front of Padre Pio's uh, church, there is a sort of retreat hotel called Centro Spiritualità Padre Pio. It was a spiritual retreat slash hotel created by Monsignor Pirino Galeone, which was one of Padre Pio's closest friends. He's still alive today. I think he's 94 years old. God oh, bless wow. him. Uh, he lived for 21 years, 21 years with Padre Pio. It was a miracle by him. And in a certain way, can they carry still today his, his energy, his spirituality. Mm -hmm. He's like a living relic. It's a living relic, yes. So <laughs> we, when I was there and everybody knew me there, so I told Monsignor Galeone that uh, the, the tenor Luciano from New York is coming, he came here. He invited us to spend, to share an ice cream with him. Mm. And then as soon as he saw us, he invited us close and he stood up and he put his hands on top of our shoulder, asking the reason why we were there, because in, in his opinion, our hearts were darker. Oh. And we start to tell him the story why we were there. Right. Well, he did, apparently to those who knew Monsignor Galeone better at that time, he did some things unique. So it's a priest, he opened up his jacket, inside his pocket he had a, a ziplock, inside the ziplock there was a handkerchief with Padre Pio's bloodstain. Now, oh. the, the goal is, here is a priest, unzip, open. In the moment he unveil this handkerchief with blood stain, it's like in a room like this, a thousand of red roses would have dropped immediately in one second. Wow. I have still chill as I speak about the sure. story because I turn right, my wife and I exchange sight, and we were realizing we were in front of some things miraculous and powerful we could not understand. Wow. And Monsignor Galeone went even further and asked us to take the relic in our hand. Oh. And I, yes, I knew Padre Pio, but I never went so close. I went sure. there because I needed him. Hmm. In that moment, I experienced that I was not worth it because I was there asking for some things while many other would, why I should, my prayer should be answered more than others. Mm. I was questioning me. But then Monsignor Galena told me, Luciano, you don't realize yet, but you will be one of the greatest advocates of Padre Pio in America. Oh, wow. Now, I still, my career is important, but I would yeah. never thought about that. And then, no, Monsignor Galeone, a very important man, so he was one of the three witnesses that started the canonization process about Padre Pio in, in his diocese. Celebrated mm. Mass with John Paul II. Wow. Um, took a book and wrote, to the boy that will come into your lives. So while the doctors have said clearly that we were going to have probably no boy, no, no, no children, right. here this man wrote, not a girl, wrote a boy. Huh. You know, you close up, you say, thank God, and then you go. We were shaken by the experience, but we never realized what we experienced at the time. I went back there many times when in 2013, I find myself on a road where I was asked by some friars from Italy to sponsor a few events about Padre Pio. And then I thought, oh, this is interesting because I want to get closer, but also to let people know about him mm. together with me. Mm -hmm. And after that, everything started. Of course, we were continuing being in a journey and we never were able to know. We had experienced several other miscarriages. Yeah. And we know that we were, there, were, there were no other, other ways. And you know, doctors were bombarding you with all other possibilities, which we, natural first and Catholic second, we could not accept. Right. But the time was ticking using my wife's wording. Mm -hmm. And then it was my birthday on August 11, 2014, uh, August 11, 2014. So I found the foundation April 4, 2014. Mm -hmm. And I thought this was my sign for Padre Pio, just because I was getting close to him to know him who he was. Sure. And really wanted for people to know him deeply. Mm -hmm. And then I pray intensively to him on my birthday. Please don't let me be a sinner. A sinner because I believed. If we were not going to have children, we have to go to experience things that not only our Catholic Church mm. will not allow, but we were out of despair. Right. And sometimes you do act of despair mm -hmm. when, you, when you're not expecting. Well, 22nd December 2014, my wife woke, wake up and tell me that she's pregnant. Now, mm. 
She was pregnant before, but we know she was losing every time. Mm. Don't tell me how that time we just watch ourselves in our eyes. Again, we experienced what we experienced before. We felt a kind of spirituality. And we know it was going to be true. In fact, Sebastian was born, 2015. Wow. It is our only son, not that because we didn't want it. It just, uh, can we make peace in our mind, in our heart? Because kind of we were predicted, mm -hmm. but also because we know that the miracle happened. It's just, sure. people might say it's a small miracle, definitely. It's more miracle being parent, because otherwise I would have not have the joy of being a father. Mm -hmm. The way Sebastian is growing, the way we see the family united, I think there is a great miracle there, especially in being persistent. Sure. You know, for me, it's been a journey of growth. Since mm -hmm. I, I came from the same country, my mother brought me in pilgrimage every year when we were passing by. Every year we go to San Giovanni Rotondo to the, to the sanctuary of San Michael because mm -hmm. they are close by and then return back home. And then you discover that you detach because you grow up and you got into a career and then travels. And then you go back to your route, but even more to getting close to Padre Pio than I never thought I would. Mm -hmm. and of course, you can understand that funding the foundation, then Sebastian was born. For me, it was all, I'm going to put myself the most I can give so that the foundation will create a name. And mostly it was taught by his closest friends. When you pray, especially to Padre Pio, ask for direction, mm. asking for him, if he wants you to be his right hands, to give help exactly when you need. Well, in his famous quote, pray hope and don't worry, mm -hmm. finally, after a few years, it gets me. Because I see my team sometimes when we are working some difficulties. Now what, at a certain time, may I miss in two days, one day? the solution will come. Mm. I know it will come, I just, we did everything we can. Somehow he has to come, and it did come. Of course, you, do, you work hard, you make some things possible, but sometimes it's, you have to realize that you need to let it go, mm -hmm. and go in God's grace, in God's will, things will happen. So in short, that's exactly then what happened. For me, it became, an, uh, they called me mastermind, they call all titles, just a man who, uh, wants to pay tribute to a holy man. Mm -hmm. I, people, I always say to, to faithful, recognize him like your grandfather, the way you want a, a person with so much wisdom mm -hmm. that could, in the most challenging time, can give you direction, but just because knowing his story, uh, we all stand up from the bed sometimes with the wrong food. That's right. And I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna take today. And then you realize what Padre Pio was going to take, and he still had time to laugh and tell jokes. This is true, Padre Pio love to tell little jokes, but <laughs> people don't say, but they always look at him when he was a mess, he was a serious man because mm -hmm. he asked for the sacred, sacrality of the church and the mess to be respected. Right, right, that's beautiful. It sounds to me like your journey is one of perseverance in prayer, perseverance in faith. Absolutely. You know, where you're, you're constantly, no matter what despair you're experiencing or upset or difficulty or challenge, that you're persevering in faith and in prayer, which has made all the difference. How beautiful.